Okay, hey guys, Jack here. Um, so I'm going to be doing a card review, or reaction I guess, to all the new Rescotten Rumble cards, which is going to be um, with the new Hearthstone expansion. Um, I've not looked at other card reviews yet, um, so these are all going to be my original ideas. Um, and some of these will be my first reaction since all the cards were, like the, the last bucket was revealed today as of recording, it's 11-28-2018. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. So we're going to start off with Druid, because that's the first on the page. Um, so pounce, zero mana, give your hero plus two attack this turn. Okay, so I'm thinking warrior has two mana, give your hero plus four attack this turn. But I know druid has some new synergy with the plus two attack card. Um, plus a zero mana spell could be used in Gadget Zan uh, Auctioneer for a Mechathune deck. So there's that to keep in mind. <clears throat> but I will need to think about the other uh, cards that have the hero powers as well. Uh, tree Speaker, transform your trees into 5-5 five, five Ancients. So I think this card 100% has potential in a sort of token druid deck. Um, but at 5 mana, um, I'm a bit more uncertain, right? Because you need to summon those tokens before um, 5 mana, or at least, like, you need to have, like, um, 1 or 2 out, right, for this to get, like, the value you want. So you could do it later on, I guess. Um, if you play Living Mana, that's not really going to work with Tree Speaker early on, because Living Mana, right, will consume all your mana. So the next turn, you can't play Tree Speaker. Mark of the Loa. Um, yeah, I think this, uh, this card will... <clears throat> at least see some experimentation it it seems very flexible you know we we often don't look at flexibility a lot of the time despite the fact that flexibility is actually quite strong um and you know there's the druid card i remember branching paths during that reveal some people actually didn't think branching paths was amazing but i thought branching paths was crazy and i still think branching paths is crazy but as you can see um i don't think this card is as universal right because you're either buffing the minion or summoning two three twos these three twos don't have taunt right so this um, this card is very flexible. I don't think that can be overlooked, but I, I don't think it's as insane as something like Branching Paths where every Druid deck will pretty much take it. I don't see Mark of the Loa as something that just every Druid path, uh, deck takes it because there's things that'll outcompete it at the four drop slot, you know? Branching Paths, uh, Oaken Summons, those cards outcompete it as a four drop spell. Uh, Gonk the Raptor, after your, hero power, uh, after your hero attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. Um, yeah, so with the amount of armor Druid gets, I don't think it's a problem for Druid to um, you know, I don't think it's a problem for Druid to be able to have damage. The problem is, I think it requires a lot of setup, right? You want Gonk out, but you want to have your damage beforehand. You want to use Pounce. You want to probably have the Malfurion uh, Death Knight Hero Power to gain plus 3 attack. Um, dealing 5 damage to 2 different minions with Pounce and then having this 7 mana. That's a 9 mana combo. requires Malfurion played and Pounce in hand. You can do 5 damage to 2 minions. It requires a lot of setup. Um, and... I mean, maybe in a Mechathune deck, again, because if Pounce is put in there, Pounce doesn't have to be used with Gonk Synergy. It's more like that's a possibility. Otherwise, it can be functioning as draw with Mechathune, right? So it's potential that it can do that. I'm just not 100% certain um, if the card is going to be viable. All right, so uh, War Druid Lodi. Now, um, Lodi has four dinosaur forms, and they're all very good. Um, unfortunately, I cannot view them on this website, but... Um, let's see if we can go into this card. Uh, nope, okay. Um, here, hold on. Let's take a look at Wardruid Lottie's forms. There we go. So Wardruid Lottie's four forms are going to be a 1-2 Poisonous Stealth for three mana. Again, not amazing. A 1-6 uh, Taunt. Uh, that's actually not bad. Um, it could be better, of course. You would want like a, I don't know, a... Not a 3-6, but like a 2-4 taunt which is what you want. This has its stats redistributed, but actually pretty good. 4-2 rush. Again, not bad. Very flexible. And 1-4 uh, spell damage plus 1. Definitely less likely to happen. I think the spell damage and the poison of stealth will be less likely. Um, these two will be much more likely. Um, and yeah, I I, uh, I think that if you, uh, in wild, if you play it with Fandral, well, that's an insane 3-mana minion. But other than that, um, I actually think this card does slot in a lot, right? When, when we talk about Druid cards, we often say that Druid cards can fit into any deck almost, or any Druid deck, right? And um, while Mark of the Loa and Gonk maybe can't, maybe Gonk does, if uh, if the three mana Malfurion hero power is good enough. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I think this has potential because I, I don't remember any other three mana cards that really contest this slot too much. And this seems to fit very well in there. Stampeding Roar. Summon a random beast from your hand and give it rush. Okay, so um, the way I see it, I think you really need to have uh, Ironhide Direnhorn in there. 
or a big beast, and this helps with if you have um, Tyranitus. So maybe if a um, big druid, a big beast druid comes out, uh, this can be useful. Otherwise, it is kind of weird because you're cheating out a card and giving it rush, which is pretty good because it's like it eliminates, but you lose a card in hand, which again for druid might not be an issue because you have ultimate infestation still uh, in standard. But I think um, this card isn't, again, it's a card that requires more setup, right? When we look at the powerful druid cards from the past, powerful druid cards often just slot into every druid deck that exists and don't require setup. So when I look at the cards from this expansion that can do that, I'm thinking War Druid Lottie so far. Gonk seems like it would require at least a bit more synergy, like with Pounce and then the a DK Hero Power. Mark of the Loa seems like it needs to fit a deck that already has minions, so maybe a token deck. But I don't know if you want to run this spell on tokens, you might just want to run buffs. This um, Tree Speaker needs a uh, card that has Treants, right? So in the same way, Stampeding Roar, a deck has to exist that has big beasts, which has happened in the past, but it wasn't just beasts, it was just big minions, like dragons, Lich King stuff. This time, a big beast deck has to exist. Hey, Spirit of the Vapor. Um, stealth for one turn after your hero attacks and kills a minion, draw a card. Okay, obviously great synergy with Gonk. However, um, having this card in your opening hand would really suck for, in the sense that um, you can't really play it early unless you have enough mana to af like cast Pounce and then get a card or cast your hero power and kill a one, mana, one health minion. So I can see Spirit of the Rapper getting stuck in your hand. Uh, on the other hand though, um, it being very cheap uh, makes it easy to combo at higher levels and because it's a stealth for a turn, you can actually attack the same turn you summon this and then attack the turn after that. So it's a pretty good draw in that aspect. I just think that Druid already has better draw cards like Nourish and Ultimate Infestation and Auctioneer Engine that this probably won't see play, but if, um, once those rotate out, maybe we see this next year. I just don't think for this expansion, Spirit of the Raptor might be good enough. It's one mana draw in, in the sense that like you can repeat draw over and over, but it's not just one mana, right? You have to pay other things. So it's, quote, one mana draw, but you have the cost of other things, right? All right, Predatory Instincts. Draw Beast from your deck, double its health. Okay, so obvious synergy with Stampeding Roar. Um, it's a tutoring draw. But four mana, you generally want to be drawing two cards, but it's a buff, right? It's a hand buff. Um, the issue here is that you still have to play the beast. So um, yes, this fits in the big beast desk. I was talking about the Stampeding Roar. Uh, I just don't know what cards slot in. And the other thing is it, it, it's competing in the four drop slot, which I think is actually um, really like branching pads is huge. Swipe is huge. Um, uh, what is that? Oaken Summons is huge. Those three four mana spells occupy six cards in the four mana slot already for many decks if you're running the Oaken Summons package. So this would be a card that competes with it, and that's honestly up to deck builders to see if it's worth it, right? Iron Hide Iron Horn. Um, so let's first take a look at this card like as a part of like a big beast package. Before we look at it individually, um, this is the obvious synergy with Stampeding Roar, because if you give it Rush and it overkills, which is the new keyword, um, if it overkills someone, you're going to get a 5-5 five, five Ironhide run, so uh, that's actually really good. Now the concern is that as a standalone card, um, so that requires Stampeding Roar to be played, right? But as a standalone card, is it good enough? Um, and I'm not too certain. Um, now luckily, uh, we know that overkill procs only on your turn, so uh, if opponents attack into it, it's not going to do much. But with a 7-7, seven, seven, trading with a 7-7 seven, seven to get a 5-5 five, five is a humongous, tremendous value. But sometimes you also just want to go face. So um, I have a really hard time placing where this card's going to be just as, as a standalone because I don't know what decks it fits into. I think a big druid deck requires it, but if a big druid exists, you know, does it just become big beast druid or is it just normal big druid? And is this card good enough for normal big druid? Because with normal big druid, you want stronger minions than just a seven drop. I know this is seven drop with additional conditions. It's just you have Lich King, Deathwing, Tyrantus, those other cards in big druid, right? So I see this more of as a big beast druid card. And then Savage Striker, okay, two mana, two, three is not bad, but the synergy is obviously with like Gonk, Pounce, and Spirit of the Raptor. Um, so yeah, overall, I would say the Druid cards this expansion don't seem, um, they don't apply the same philosophy I feel like a lot of the older Druid cards did where you just have insane cards. These times uh, it's looking toward, you know, trying to build more synergy. Um, these two seem more like, uh, the Tree Speaker and the Mark of Loa seem more like a synergy but for a uh, tokenish type deck or a Triant deck. Uh, but I don't think Market Low is that great, and I think Tree Speaker, um, well, we'll see if there, it's enough setup and it's fast enough, right? Um, these five cards right here, or no, one, two, three, four, these four cards with the Attack Druid make sense, and these three cards with Big Beast Druid make sense. 
Um, it's just, again, I'm not an expert in deck building. I'm examining that these decks have to exist, I feel like, for them to work. I can't see these cards really being played too much outside of those decks. Gonk potentially can. Pounds can as Cycle. I don't think Spirit of the Raptor does unless that deck exists. And the same thing with Savage Striker. Um, and these two kind of require Beast Druid. Maybe this doesn't require Big Beast, but it's four mana draw, so I think it does. Um, and finally, War Druid Lottie is the OG type of Druid card, which I would say is slotted into every single Druid deck, um, which isn't amazing design, but, you know, it is what it is. Okay, so that's Druid, this expansion. Um, so really interesting cards, actually. And let's go to Hunter. So Halazi, the Lynx. Fill your hand with 1-1 one, one Lynx instead of Rush. Okay, so... It's a 5-mana 3-2, but it fills your hand with 1-1 one, one Lynxes instead of Rush. I'm assuming they're 1-mana. Um, hmm. Man, this is a really expensive effect, because 1-1 one, one Lynxes that have Rush are, like, worse than... Uh, I would honestly argue it's worse than um, Unleash the Hounds, right? Because Unleash the Hounds is 3-mana. Generally, yeah, you're probably only summoning three things, but they have charge and it's three mana. This time, if you summon three things, it has rush. But the problem is, you're paying five mana for a three two that adds those cards to your hand. I actually don't think Halazi the Lynx is very good on its own, and it's going to require synergy with other cards, which luckily, you know, Hunter has. So I don't see any existing Hunter decks playing Halazi, but with these new cards, so maybe we'll see, right? So, for example, Spirit of the Lynx, three mana. Um, when you summon a beast, give it plus one, plus one. So obviously this synergizes well with Halazi. And this is summon, so it works with other summon effects, uh, any beast. But obviously small beasts will probably be most beneficial because you can get the most value out of playing a bunch of them. Um, the problem is this is three mana. And three mana to buff everything by plus one, plus one. Um, I don't think it's amazing, but the fact that it can, this card will stick around for two turns maybe, right? Because the first turn you're not getting that much upfront value, but the second turn you are. The issue I see is that Hunter has a faster deck already called um, Death Rattle Hunter, right? Uh, or Egg Hunter, that it already like loses a bit of upfront value, but then the next turn after it gains a lot. This combo with Halazi the Lynx and Spirit of the Lynx requires you to lose almost like two turns of value. So I just feel like it might be slower than Death Rattle Hunter. I turn to detach it. Uh, if you control beast, gain plus one durability. Um, yeah, I think this card uh, will probably see play. Um, whether it's better than Eagle Horn Bow is to be seen. Um, obviously, three and two attack are very different things, um, but it's very easy to turn it into a two three if you have a one drop beast. So I see it having high possibility at least to be experimented. The beast within. You have a friendly beast plus one plus one, uh, then it attacks a random enemy minion. Um, I don't think this card is all that good. Uh, yes, you could potentially get two attacks off with a beast, or just one attack on the turn in a summoning sickness. But um, for a one mana spell, I don't think that does enough in your deck. Um, and it seems to be more of like a control card almost, so I don't think it's great. Zuljin, cast all spells you've played this game. Um, in order for me to go through this, I think that I think that like you would have to play this in like a spell hunter deck almost and spell hunter hasn't been around the last expansion it's been around expansions before but not this one um, but i could see this card being played i actually think zuljin fits in an interesting spot because a lot of times in some matchups right you play dk rexar um, earlier on because you need the value right so say you're hunter against like a uh, control deck and dk rexar just wins you the game zuljin does not do that zuljin is kind of like Gul'dan, where it's uh, actually played more for the battle cry and as a result you actually need to play Zuljin before DK Rexar, otherwise your hero power becomes shitty, right? Because Zuljin's hero power is just two mana deal, two damage. You're playing it for the battle cry. So this makes it kind of an interesting, like, okay, shit, I have uh, DK Rexar in hand, but I still want to get off the value from the Zuljin battle cry. So do I wait for turn 10 and try to draw out Zuljin, or do I do the DK Rexar right now? Um, I can see this being slotted into just general control decks that have enough spells. Uh, it's just Hunter, again, in a weird place that I feel like Death Rattle is kind of the, was the best archetype from last expansion and might remain so. Uh, okay, Battlecry. If you have a weapon discovered, or equipped, discover a spell. Uh, obviously, this synergizes as well with um, this because it has high durability, or even a uh, the Eagle uh, Hunter's Bow because... Um, Eagle Horn Bow, sorry, because it gains more durability from the secrets. So uh, this card could be played. I'm just not certain because it seems a bit slow, but hey, you never know, right? Master's Call. Discover a minion in your deck. If all three are beasts, draw them. Yeah, so obviously synergy with beasts. I actually think this card gets 100% played um, in a Beast Hunter deck. Um, it's draw for Hunter. It draws three cards for three mana if they're all beasts. Um, so I actually think this card will 100% see play uh, in a Beast Hunter deck. 
whether or not that deck is good is up in the air. Um, but let's see. So Revenge of the Wild is summon your beast that died this turn for two mana. This is not bad. But um, I feel like this is something that people will start playing around because of the insane power level this card could bring. Again, Beast Hunter, and even outside of Beast Hunter, people might play this, right? Because, say, you have a deck that can run Savannah High Main. Uh, being able to resummon it for two mana is pretty crazy. Uh, not sure, though. Baited Arrow, deal three damage, overkill summon a 5-5 five, five Devil Sword. I don't think this card's good because even though you can deal three damage, I think that it's for five mana. It's unlikely to overkill something by three mana, and then you're summoning a 5-5 five, five Devil Sword. Imagine a card that said... Uh, it's a five mana five five that says deal two damage battle cry that's not bad but i don't think that's like broken right enough to be played and this isn't even like su summon a five five every time this is only if you can deal more than two damage or uh kill something with um two or a two or one health right so i actually think baited arrow is not very good spring paw rush at a one one links with rush in your hand so this is obviously synergy with hillazel and links um yeah again if this deck is going to be made it's going to be experimented i just don't think this deck it has a lot of value it's just it's not upfront enough because you need to play these things beforehand so it seems like hunter is getting some interesting tools i don't think it's amazing but i also don't think hunter needs tools because death rattle hunter is actually so good right now um so i'm mostly okay with the hunter cards i really do like the dynamic zuljan brings to the idea that hey i can't play dk rexar right away right because i lose a lot of value if i do so um so yeah that's hunter this expansion and i don't know hopefully we don't see a beast hunter because hunter with card draw will be very frustrating given its hero power the idea with hunter is that it runs out of fuel but its hero power is kind of like its fuel already right because every time you press it it's just more and more powerful because the lower the health is for the opponent the much better your hero power is scaling up to kill them okay so next we have mage scorch deal four damage to a minion cost one if you played an elemental last turn um yes uh elemental mage has already been played uh i think that this is completely possible um Unfortunately, this doesn't happen in Odd Mage. Uh, this would be a nice card to have, but oh well. Um, I think this will be experimented, and if Elemental Mage is a good deck, I actually think this will see play. It's kind of like Wing Blast, but instead of having to trade a minion, it, you have to play an Elemental last turn, which, while it's a bit more difficult in the sense that Wing Blast is easy to kill something, it also has better... It's a better play in the sense that you didn't have to commit anything to killing a minion, you just had to play an Elemental, if that explains it. So I think Scorch, definitely a good card. I think it will see play. Splitting image when one of your minions is attacked, summon a copy of it. Um, this has some shenanigans with Exodia Mage, or some shenanigans in the idea that you have a big minion that gets attacked. Um, but we've seen value cards like this before, and they almost never work. It's just this is a new proc for a secret, so it's a new thing you have to test for, which actually makes it quite good. And I think that if mages have big enough cards, like, right, if your deck mostly has 5-5s five and above, um, this could potentially be good. It's just usually... Uh, people aren't trading into those cards unless they have to. So some decks against control decks aren't ever almost ever trading into those cards. They're just killing them with spells, right? So th the thing is like against an aggro deck where they or a mid-range deck where they might trade it, this card might be too slow, right? Because it's three mana as a secret. And against control decks where you have enough time to play it, they might not be attacking into it. So I see that as a potential like maybe it won't work out. But nonetheless, the card itself, the effect is very good. It's just does it make sense with the types of deck you're playing against? Okay, the next elemental you play this turn costs two less. Um, so, obviously, for zero mana, right, you're losing a card to reduce the cost by two, but you could see this as uh, kind of like a worse, um, what is it called? Uh, the rogue card. The one that reduces the next spell you play by three mana. Yeah, uh, I could think an elemental mage this card could see play because elemental mage has some good card draw, and here's the thing, right? With elemental mage, you actually cheating out some of the really strong elementals is pretty good, and this actually helps you consistently play elementals on each turn, which helps your snowballing, right? Because elementals are based on playing an elemental last turn. So say you play a four mana elemental and you need to play a six mana elemental next turn uh, or a seven mana elemental last turn. You have five mana, you play this, you can play the seven mana elemental you're gonna play and then keep chaining them. So I actually think this card will see play for that reason. Uh, Arcanosaur, if you played an elemental last turn, deal three damage to all other minions. Uh, do not think this is very good because at six mana, it deals three to all. Yes, that's like a you know, Hellfire for 4 mana plus summons a 3-3. Three, three. But Duskbreaker is a better version of this. Duskbreaker almost kills everything on turn 4, to be honest. It just requires a dragon in hand. And with Elementals, if you played an Elemental last turn, you're probably blasting it with the 3 damage effect. So I don't think Arcanosaur is very good. But I could be wrong. Blast Wave. Deal 2 damage to all minions. Overkill. Add a random mage spell to your hand. Yeah, I think this card is really good um, because... 
in a, if a value mage deck exists, this card gets played because every time you kill a minion uh, with the two damage, you add a random mage spell to your hand and Consecration's four mana and it gets played. I can see this being played just for the fact that you can get value out of it. So yeah. Darling Fire Eater, your next hero power this turn deals two more damage. Obviously synergy with Odd Mage. And, um, so I'll just go into this, right? So Spirit of the Dragonhawk, stealth for one turn, your hero power also targets adjacent minions. Obviously they weren't going to print this as a three mana card or a one mana card because then Odd Mage can abuse it. But um, this synergizes with this, right? Because this five mana combo of these two cards plus your hero power, you can deal three damage to three minions. It's just, I think it's more likely that Odd Mage is played and then Spirit of the Dragonhawk just doesn't see play, right? So going into that, for Odd Mage, you have uh, July the Dragonhawk, Jan Alai. And if you are hero power, dealt eight damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. And you know how you do this? You play Odd Mage, you hero power four times, and you play this card. And you have Ragnaros. You have a, for seven mana, you get Ragnaros and an additional 4 4. I think this card's fucking crazy. I think Odd Mage will be played. I don't know if it's tier one, but I know this card's power level itself is actually crazy. Um, and it synergizes again with Darling Fire Eater. And it synergizes with Pyromaniac because for three mana, if your hero power kills a minion, you draw a card. Now, of course, your hero power only does two damage, right? So it's not like this crazy, like, it's guaranteed. It's just a more synergy for Odd Mage. And Odd Mage was already a deck that some people experimented with, so this could tip it over the edge. And I see it as a possibility. Blast Wave adds more value. This adds tempo. This adds tempo. This gives you more fuel. I think it's certainly a possibility to look at. Hex Lord Malakras, add a copy of your opening hand to this card uh, to your hand, except this card. Um, again, Value Mage uh, will be played with Splitting Image and Hex Lord, um, and potentially Blast Wave. Uh, but this card is a bit slow. Um, you already have Jaina to stabilize your late game, and you don't really need value because of Jaina. So maybe after Jaina rotates out and you know the DKs are gone, you need other ways to win the game. But because Jaina's in, I actually don't think you need Hex Lord Malakras. Okay, Paladin. Uh, Blood Claw, deal five damage to your hero. That's a hefty price to pay for a one mana 2 2 weapon. A Flash of Light, restore four health, draw a card. Um, I mean, this would be really good if Murloc combo was still around, but other than that, I don't see why Paladin needs to cycle. Um, because if you're dealing damage to yourself, right, but then healing yourself and drawing a card with it, it's like you've pretty much paid back the mana you were going to pay for this anyways and then cycled a card. So it, I don't know. I don't think it's that great. Uh, Oh man, I want to pronounce it Baraki Battle Axe, but it's Faraki Battle Axe. Shout out to anyone who knows what Baraki is, but yeah. Um, give a minion in your hand, plus two, plus two. Uh, yeah, um, that Knuckle card wasn't good. This card's not going to be very good because Hand Buff Paladin was not good. Uh, so I don't see this card being played. High Priest to Kel. Convert all but one of your hero's health to, into armor. Uh, yes, uh, obviously like any Heladin deck will play this. It's just I don't know if Heladin's actually that good. And this doesn't actually give you any upfront value. You still have to pay into healing yourself to make this good, right? And honestly, you're just heal you're, you'd just be healing yourself earlier. So I don't think this card is as insane as some people think. It's just a really cool mechanic. Um, and I I think it'll see play. I just I don't think it's busted or like super high power level right it's not the card that'll define the deck per se because you you can't you, you can't even guarantee drawing it by turn three all the time it's just it has potential and i think it fits in the deck and i think the deck will be experimented so i think it'll see play Zandalari templar if you restore 10 health this game gain plus four plus four and taunt okay so obviously this is the big card that does it uh unfortunately to have restored 10 health i don't think that's happening by turn four for the most part um and beyond that um, I think that at 8 mana, okay, so say you play this at a higher turn, right? Say like 5, 6, 7, 8. Yes, you summon an 8, 8, but you also, so you, you get other mana to do tempo out things. Um, usually when I think of cards that you can tempo things out, I think you have a board clear but here beforehand. Paladin's board clear is like uh, Equality, um, Acolyte, right? So, or not Acolyte, Pyromancer. Um, so, I mean, in a control paladin, this deck, this card makes sense, but any sort of like mid range healing, this card doesn't make too much sense because I don't know what other tempo you're really getting out of it. But if you're wasting mana healing up your hero, you're not really tempoing up anyways. This seems as more of a recovery card for some sort of control heal paladin, which doesn't have enough, um, I don't know, late game value to actually sustain or tempo to beat out like things like Jaina, Gul'dan, blah, blah, blah. So that's why I don't think a healogen will really be good. It's just it'll be experimented. Uh, Spirit of the Tiger. For one turn after you cast a spell, summon a tiger with stats equal to its cost. Um, 
Nuff said this is for Control Paladin. Control Paladin hasn't existed for a long time, and even when it did exist, it wasn't very good. We can take a look at this spell. A new challenger, discover a six cost minion, summon it with Taunt and Divine Shield. Uh, yeah, so it would synergize with Spirit of the Tiger. Um, let's see. Synergizes with that. It would also synergize with Spikes, uh, the Stegadon Steed. Um, other than that, though, it's not great. Uh, it tempos things out, but you're paying for four cost again. These give you huge value on board, and can completely swing the board. So it could like be somewhat decent, but it relies on so many factors that I can't give a hundred percent outcome. I, I think New Challenger we tried with Spirit of the Tiger, but I don't see it as like in, in the existing deck, right? Because Odd Paladin is not going to take these cards. Time out. Your hero is immune until your next turn. Um, this is mostly anti-combo if you have like a more mid-range or like a, um, I mean, if you had a combo deck, yes, you would use this. If you had a mid-range deck, potentially, to stop yourself from dying to aggro, but it only saves you the one turn. This is actually worse than Ice Block. Some people are like, well, this is broken because you get to choose to be immune, but keep in mind, Ice Block, you can play it at an early turn to use the three mana if you're a control deck. This card, you just need to dedicate the three mana right before you die, and that means you also have to predict if sometimes if you'll die, which means this card has a lot more room for error, and I think is a bit less um, just useful because you can't pay the upfront cost earlier in the game. Uh, Immortal Prelate. Shuffle this into your deck. It keeps any enchantments. Um, so Spike Stagadon, uh, or Spike Ridge Seed would be good with it. Um, yeah, for a control paladin that uses spells, you know, Kibler will probably try that. But other than that, I'm not too sure. Uh, Shervel of the Tiger. So you get Divine Shield, Rush, and Lifesteal. This costs one less for each mana spent. So I talked about this before, and I think that with the mana cost, you're going to be what? Uh, so even if you spend enough... So this is only on spells, right? So let's say the... L let's look at the perfect scenario. So you play a spell every turn that's equal to your max mana. So 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is down to 15, um, then 5, then it's down to 10. So at turn 6, it's at 10 mana. Uh, turn 6, you use 6 mana, then on turn 7, it's 4 mana. Uh, turn 7, 4 mana, 7, 5, Divine Shield, Rush, Life Steal. It's very good. It's going to be played, right? Unfortunately, you have to also think that it's not 100% that you're going to play a spell with each mana, uh, with that mana every turn. And frankly, the Paladin spells aren't actually amazing enough for that to happen. So I think the only time it actually does get played is in a more control deck. Um, and again, I, I fear that Control Paladin just in this world can't exist. A year ago, two years ago, it might have had a chance, but with the Death Knight uh, inevitability win conditions, um, it's just very hard to see that coming into fruition. But, you know, interesting. I think, um, you know, definitely it'll be fun to play, experimented with, but just, yeah, the type of Control Paladin has always had was never amazing. Okay, so going on to Priest, Akunai uh, Phantasm. Uh, yeah, I don't think a combo exists right now for this to be really great in for, like, uh, OTK. Uh, you, Priest used to have that spell that did this, um, was 2 mana, but it synergized with the 2-3 uh, um, that reduced your spell cost by 1. This time it's on a minion, so you have a bit more tempo, but um, it actually has less synergy with OTK potential. Um, well, speaking of OTK potential, you have Regenerate, which is 3 store, 3 health, so I guess this could be seen as Battle Cry, deal 3 damage discard a random card. Um, again, great tempo, but uh, I don't know what Priest deck can really abuse that. Um, Mass Hysteria, another great tool for Control Priest. Uh, yeah, I think it'll be experimented, but I actually think it's a worse brawl, because if a minion attacks another minion and kills it, um, or if it doesn't even guarantee that all minions die, even, whereas Brawl does guarantee that most minions die. Uh, Sand Rudge, um, synergizes with Akunai Phantasm, so it'll be tried in a more tempo-oriented deck. I don't think Priest is very good with tempo. They have that two-mana card um, that has synergy, uh, but other than that, I can't think of much that Priest can do, <laughs> so I don't know. I, I think that Blizzard would really have to push hard with printing really OP Priest cards to get it to become a tempo deck, uh, like when Dragon Priest was a thing with the uh, Dragon Knight Operator, Dragon Knight OP, because it's 5-mana, five 5-6 five, draw card, right? And draw a really good card, too. Uh, other than that, though, it's kind of hard to see Priest getting good tempo. Alright, Seance. Choose a minion, add a copy of it to your hand. Hmm. So, you get to be selective on what minion. This could potentially repeat battle cries for, like, good cards that you have. Um, 
yeah, I could see it being played in a priest deck, but it would have to be again a control priest deck, which right now the priest decks aren't really like exactly control. Control comes up every once in a while, but it's mostly like combo priest right now. So again, new deck would have to be made, and it's difficult to see that happening unless like you can get both value and uh, tempo in the same time. Alright, Priest Legendary, Princess Talanji, summon all minions from your hand that didn't start in your deck. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so I guess synergy with Seance and other things that add to your hand. I um, actually don't know what other cards this synergizes with. Yeah, like you'd have to discover a bunch of cards that didn't start in your deck, so I think it'll be hard to do. Um, I don't think Princess Talanji is all that good because it requires so much setup. Yeah. Grave War. Taunt. Cost one less for each spell you've cast this game. Hmm. So you'd, you'd want to play this at like six mana, right? So you have to play six spells before this. And playing that by turn six is very hard. Uh, therefore, Grave Horror probably isn't amazing. I'm trying to think of pre spells right now. And for the most part, I'm thinking of like. Uh, the Shadow Word cards, um, the card that searches things. Yeah, I can't think of too many Priest cards that like you'd just be spamming to reduce this cost, but maybe some Broken Combo exists with this that you can get a bunch of zero mana cards, cost of versions of this or something. I don't know. I just, again, I'm looking at it from the decks that exist right now, and I can't see it in any of those. All right, Basamdi the Dead, draw one cost minions from your deck until your hand is full. Um, I don't think Priest has enough good one-cost minions that that's really justified. Spirit of the Dead. Stealth for one turn. After a friendly minion dies, shuffle a one-cost copy of it into your deck. Hmm. Uh, that could potentially work, um, but it's so slow to draw something from your deck that this is really more of that just like OG control style with Seance, you know, with Princess Talanji, with uh, Archbishop Benedictus that I think in this current format just does cannot compete with like Hunter, right? It just, it doesn't work against Druid, it doesn't work against Hunter. Those decks are very powerful right now. Yes, metas can shift, but I don't see enough cards yet that like meta shift would be large enough that you could justify that kind of control. So like Control Paladin, Control Warrior, and Control Priest, the super value version of Control Priest, it really doesn't work out that much. All right, Surrender to Madness. Destroy three of your mana crystals, give all minions in your deck plus two, plus two. Again. I could be wrong, but I just want to say I really don't think I am on this because to combo this um, destroy three of your mana crystals, you need to do it very early on with a bunch of one cost cards and use this to draw those one cost cards. How else are you drawing things? I don't think that's going to work out very well because you destroy three of your mana crystals. All right, Rogue. Uh, Stolen Steel. I'm actually very unhappy they printed this card because I see a world where you discover Twigger the World Tree, play Twigger the World Tree, and then have 10 mana at turn five. That's going to be very upsetting if that happens. Please remove Twig from the uh, the weapon pile for this. Um, other than that, uh, I'm trying to think of decks it fits into. Um, the problem is since it's RNG, it doesn't fit directly into any decks, I feel like. Um, you know, Kingsbane doesn't need it, and Miracle doesn't really need it, and Odd Rogue can't use it, so I'm actually very unsure. I just think it can create some frustrating situations. Serrated Tooth. Uh, one mana, give your minions rush. Um, or death battle, give your minions rush. Yeah, so this synergizes really well with that one three mana uh, card that gains uh, plus one, plus one every time you attack. Uh, other than that, though, I don't know the benefit of giving your minions rush unless you summon something the same turn, and you have to attack three times with the one mana, one three weapon. Um, Grawl the Shark kind of works. Other than that, I can't think of too many minions, so I don't know if this will be played. Bloodsail Howler. Gain plus one, plus one for each other pirate in control. Okay, so um, they actually really try to push pirates this time, right? And uh, we can't look this in isolation. So you have um, you have Captain Hookshot's Tusk. Uh, summon three pirates from your deck, give them rush. That's more pirates. Draw two pirates from your deck, uh, combo and a weapon. Deal three damage to each enemy, repeat for one of your pirates. Um, so yeah, if you just spam a bunch of pirates, if you control two more pirates, this is a 3-3, three, three, two mana 3-3 three, three rush. Um, it's just, that's very hard to happen in early turns, so I don't think this is very good. Uh, Gurubashi Hype Man, discover a 1-1 one, one copy of Battlecry Minion, it costs 1. Um, 
You need a pretty good battle cry effect. I think Grawl the Shark works. Um, I think Captain Hookshot works. So actually, um, yeah, there's a lot of good cards for this. It's just at seven mana, I don't know if you want to play this. If it was like a three mana, like two, three, or one, three even, and it said that, it'd be pretty good because you just want the battle cry effect. Unfortunately, at seven mana, I think the upfront cost might be too expensive for it to see play. Captain Hookshot, um, I mean, it's pretty obvious that you need a pirate deck to work for this. I don't 100% think a pirate deck will be used. So. It, the card itself is good tempo, but requires enough pirates to be printed that it's useful. And we'd have to look at the neutral pool and everything else for this new pirate rogue to exist. Walk the Plank, destroy an undamaged minion. Um, this might actually see play because it's assassinate, but they don't. you don't want them to take damage. It's execute, but for minions that aren't already damaged. Um, unfortunately, it's pretty easy to be played around. And I don't know, I'd, I think... Rogue still has a Vile Spine, so since Vile Spine's in the meta, I don't think Walk of the Plank will play get played. Uh, Girl the Shark, eat a minion in your deck and gain stats, death row, add it to your hand. Um, so it essentially draws you a card for the death rattle, and when you eat a minion in your deck, you gain stats. Well, first of all, there's the crazy, like, the darkness synergy, right? Because you play this 5 mana, it becomes a 22-22. Uh, of course, that's a 1 in, like, very slim chance. Other than that, though, this card seems more like a flavor card, if anything. Uh, it could potentially get, be very strong, but at 5 mana, I think Druid's, or, uh, Rogue is developing stronger things. By 5 mana, Rogue wants to be playing, um, you know, Cobalt Scale Banes, uh, Vile Spines, the 2-2 two -two that buffs your other minions, you know, just really making the board they already have stronger. This relies on killing a good minion, so something that's at least 3-3 three, three or higher, which, if you're running a lot of those in an aggro Rogue, it's not very good. Um, so actually, I'm not I don't think Grawl will actually see play. Raiding Party. Draw two pirates from your deck, combo, and a weapon. Um, I think that this is a good card. I just don't think there's enough good pirates. At least, I, I haven't looked at the neutral list yet, so maybe there are. Just to my knowledge right now, I don't think a pirate deck will exist. And for that reason, I also think Cannon Barrage is bad, because you'd need this. You'd need at least... So deal three damage to a random enemy, repeat for each of your pirates. So you need at least two pirates out for it to be useful. Because uh, then six mana deal nine randomly, and that's still not very good. You'd want like at least three. That's too much setup at six mana. That's not very good. A Spirit of the Shark stealth for one turn. Your minion battle cries and combos trigger twice. I think one hundred percent someone's gonna find a combo for this to work in, and it'll be played. Okay, three more classes to go. Shaman, battle cry. If you played two spells this turn, deal two damage. This requires too much setup. This is not being played. I think unless. Um, you know, there's a combo. Otherwise, it's just not. It's not being played in a normal deck. Like it, ha there has to be some sort of broken effect for this to be played. Um, return all spells you played last year into your hand. What spells do you really want to return as shaman right now? I'm trying to think. Um, I can't think of too many, other than like the seven mana eternal hair of minions, the legendary, or all your evolves. Oh yeah. Oh. Um, there's not a current deck that that really works too well in. I don't think even Shutterlock would want it. So I don't see where this card gets played. Bog Slasher, return a friendly minion to your hand and give it plus two, two plus two. Um, yeah, again, it, it, it costs so much initially, right? Because you have to return something. Now I'm assuming you're returning like a one cost or two cost minion, which means it's easy to summon it back with higher stats. It's just by then you'd already want to be summoning higher stat minions anyways, that you'd need to play that lower cost minion plus another low cost minion for it to be worth it. And you lose a bit of initial tempo unless you or your minion, like, you can trade and have it survive. So, yeah, I guess it could be played, but it depends on what minions you can play before that and what minions other decks are playing. Because other decks are playing minions that you can trade into and then return it, then maybe Bog Slosher gets played. But if other decks are playing big enough minions that you can't trade into and have them survive, then Bog Slosher is just useless. All right, Big Bad Voodoo. Give a friendly minion, death rattle, summon a random minion that costs one more. Um... Hmm. Well, in terms of trading, uh, I wouldn't say it's amazing unless you're trading and it's going to die because Unstable Evolution already does this. Uh, but it's it has a few differences with Unstable Evolution. It's just I don't think Unstable is played right now in a meta deck, so I don't think Big Bad Voodoo will be played right now because you want to put it on at least a pretty big minion, like at least like a four or five drop for the value investment that you're going to be taking. So I don't know. 
All right, Spirit of the Frogs. Stealth for one turn. Whenever you cast a spell, draw a spell from your deck that costs one more. Okay, so um, uh, this really requires you to examine what spells that Shaman has, and I'm not going to do that right now, but like, for example, if you play Volcano, you were, you'd be getting a six mana spell. I don't remember what Shaman has in six mana. If you're playing like a one mana spell, you get a two mana spell. So it, it really depends on what Shaman cards are good and they fit into the right deck. And again, a lot of setup. It's a three mana draw card, but you have to invest other things to get that card draw. And I think that cost is a lot. Totemic Smash. Deal two damage, overkill someone a basic totem. Um, yeah, frankly, I don't see it being played because basic totems aren't amazing and you have to hit something that's one health for this to work. So a one mana card that kills a minion and summons a totem situationally is meh. If it was summon a basic totem battle cry deal two damage, it would be pretty good at two man one mana, but you have to deal one dam two damage to a one mana minion. So it's more like deal one damage, honestly, which makes it a lot worse because you have um, Elven Archer, who is not played very much. Okay, Haunting Visions. The next spell you cast this turn deals costs three less. Discover a spell. Um, okay, so this is a really shitty Primordial Glyph. Uh, yeah, um, it's kind of a bad Primordial Glyph, but you could argue that by casting this card, you can discover a spell, look for options, and then play another spell, which Primordial Glyph doesn't let you do because you, you have the only the cost reduction is on the spell you have, but this only lasts for one turn. So maybe Shutterwalk plays it. Other than that, I don't think something other than Shutterwalk will play it. Because an aggro shaman, I mean, you'd want to discover, like, what? Lava Burst, uh, Lightning Bolt. But Lightning Bolt, you'd be playing too much mana for. Lava Burst is one of those perfect situations. I don't know if it gets played in shaman. Two mana, one three, has two attack while you have overloaded mana crystals. Uh, I actually think this has a chance of being played. I remember Spirit Claws. But Spirit Claws was a 1-mana one 1-3, one is the thing, right? So, as a 1-mana one 1-3, one uh, you require to roll something on turn 2. By turn 2, um, you play this, it's a 1-3. You're not going to have overloaded mana crystals by turn 2. On turn 3, you play something that overloads yourself. Like a Lava Burst, um, this has 3 attack. Yeah, it requires a lot of setup. I don't think it'll be played, because I don't think Shaman's too bent on overloading right now until like later turns. The, I can't think of the turn three overload cards right now, so. Okay, Zentimo. Whenever you target a minion with a spell, it also targets adjacent ones. Um, Unstable Evolution comes to mind. That'd be very interesting. Too much setup, though. Uh, but Lightning Bolt, if you target an enemy, targets three. So actually, this card is general enough that I actually do think it'll see play in Shaman. Uh, I think it's 100% you just general enough. Reign of Toads. Summon three, two, four Toads with Taunt. I just don't think this is going to be played. This costs nine mana, <laughs> pretty much, because of the Overload. It can be played on turn six, but you lose three mana. Two fours with Taunts aren't amazing. Um, yeah, what else can I say? Nine mana is a very fair cost. Even cheating it out for six mana isn't amazing, because the next turn you're behind. Um... But the initially six mana three toads is like not awful, not the most awful thing. So, okay, I mean, there's a world where I could see it being played. I, it just doesn't stand out to me right away as like high power level. The only card from Shaman that I see as high power level from this set really is Zentimo. Other than that, I'm actually kind of disappointed with the Shaman's cards uh, this time around. But I mean, Shaman for me has always been kind of a lame class anyway, so it's not the biggest deal. It's just, I don't know, they, they don't really excite me very much. Next up, we have Warlock. Okay, Blood Trail. Sapper, after a friendly minion deals two damage to an enemy hero. Okay, so, or dies. So I'm gonna put this right out here. This is not getting played in normal deck. I think it's gonna be played in some broken combo deck with the file or something to kill something. If it does get played in a normal deck, I'll be surprised that Warlock can use this card, have it sit in hand, and then combo with the file and be okay with dealing damage to the enemy hero as one of the primary concerns of that combo. Other than that, I really don't see this card fitting in very well. Demon Bolt, destroy a minion, costs one less for each minion you control. Um, at eight mana, this seems a bit expensive um, because for each minion you control, like, you want to get this down to like at least four mana, right? Because Assassinate's bad. Yes, Warlock. Oh, you know what? My bad, actually. I think Demon Bolt will be played. Yes, Assassinate's a bad card for Rogue, but keep in mind, Demon played, um, Demon, or not Demon, Warlock played uh, 
uh, Siphon Soul, which was six mana to destroy a minion because its sequel target was very bad. Then it started playing Blast Crystal Potion, which was pretty much overload one for the rest of the game. It played that at four mana because they needed ways to deal like single just destroy a minion. I actually think Demon Bolt will be played in Control Warlock because... It could potentially be a better Siphon Soul. You don't get the life gain, sure, but if you control three minions, then it goes down to five mana. So it can compete, it's just... Um, if you don't control a minion, well, you kind of wish you had testing either. So I think it'll it'll be experimented. Ultimately, I think that it's still a similar power level to Siphon Soul, so it might not get picked, because Siphon Soul has the heal three. Uh, but it, it, it's potential, right? I think it'll at least be tried out. Uh, Grim Rally, destroy a friendly minion, give your minions plus one, plus one. So I wonder if Death Rattles activate before the card activates. If it does, that really helps it out. Um, yeah, so this obviously it needs to be in some sort of Death Rattle Zoo or Egg Zoo, something that has tokens. Um, but I, I could see it getting played. All right. Soul Warden. Add three card, random cards you discarded this game to your hand. Uh, I think that actually Soul Warden might be played because they actually have some really cool discard effects this time. Reckless Dire Troll. Um, discard your lowest cost card. Yeah, uh, again, it, this could synergize well. Um, High Priest Jekyllic, a Taunt Lifesteal. When you discard this, add two copies of it to your hand. I actually think High Priest Lechlick will be played even without discard because it's a 4 mana 3 4 taunt with Lifesteal. That means that if the opponents hit it, you gain at least 3 health and you save 4 health from the thing. Um, and you might end up killing an enemy minion, or if it hits twice, you gain 6 health, and you save 4 health from the attack, so that's like gaining 10 health total. So I think that card will be played 100% in, in a Warlock deck, even without a discard. Uh, Shriek, discard your lowest cost card, deal 2 damage to all minions. Um, so you lose 2 cards for an effect that costs roughly 3 mana. Um, yeah, again, synergizes with Disc Lock. Um, there's 4 cards here that synergize with Disc Lock. Uh, I think it might be tried again, but these disc lock cards seem to be more control oriented, so maybe not. Because if you play control oriented, you're not going to be able to play like a win con card because discarding it might discard the card you don't want. Luckily, this time these cards are very like you can add it back to your hand, and you can actually, yeah, no, because you can add it back to your hand, you can discard the lowest cost one. You could there's ways to manipulate it, so I think 100% people will try out these in a control discard block. And we'll see, because discard is a very powerful mechanic. Void Contract. Uh, this card will not be played unless um, either a broken combo is found or control decks are extremely prevalent. Otherwise, this card is more of a meme. They should have just called this Nano Contract. Uh, Hyrek the Bat. Fill your board with copies of this minion. Um, obviously, this works with Spirit of the Bat. Uh, after a friendly minion dies, give a random minion in your hand plus one plus one. So either this is played in a control deck where it's one of many win conditions, because you can't play it as your sole win condition, but it's one of those many like waves of threats that you can put out, or it's just in a mid-range deck that needs a finisher, in which there's probably better finishers, like I think Lich King is better, uh, it gives you better value, it requires no setup, you know, Doom Guards obviously to rush down the enemy, there's other better finishers, so it's more likely that a control deck exists. Unfortunately, Control Rock right now, even though it's decent, it's not amazing. Um, so I worry that Control Warlock won't be fast enough. And then, like I said, Spirit of the Bat. Um, stealth for one turn after a friendly minion dies, give a minion in your hand, plus one, plus one. Mostly to synergize with Hyrek. It's a lot of commitment for a zoo deck, but you could potentially get it buffed, and it already has three health. If you get it buffed, it could become a 1-3 or a 2-4. So I think the card will be experimented, and it might actually be pretty permanent overall. So Warlock actually had a lot of exciting tools this expansion. Okay, and now finally we get to Warrior of the Classes, then we go through Neutrals. Warrior, of course, is my favorite class. I love Control Warrior. So first let's go with Devastate. Deal 4 damage to a damaged minion. Uh, yes, this is a great tempo card. It's <laughs> worse than Old Execute, unfortunately, because Old Execute was one mana destroy a damaged enemy minion. Um, yeah, what else can I say? It's a, uh, It's kind of like a good early game tempo version of Execute that's less flexible. Execute was played like that in Dragon Warrior. I could see this card being played 100% in, te in a tempo-ish deck. Dragons were add two random dragons to your hand. Wow, well, great value. We'll see play in Dragon Warrior deck. Stealth for one turn, your rush minions are immune the turn they're summoned. The fact that that's one mana is actually so crucial that I think it actually will be experimented in a rush warrior deck. Ember Scale Drake, if you're holding a dragon, gain five armor. 
100% played in control dragon deck because if you think back, Shield Maiden was 6 mana, 5, 5, gain 5 armor. This has a condition, but it comes down a turn earlier. So I actually think this card's pretty crazy good. Akali the Rhino. Rush, draw Rush minion, overkill, draw Rush minion from your deck, give it plus 5, plus 5. Um, yes, you would have to kill a minion that has 4 or less health by turn 5, or by turn 8. Uh, that is a bit difficult. Um, but you get a lot of value out of it, and it procs every time, and it's a rush. So I think it'll be experimented in a rush deck. Overlord's Whip. After you play minion, deal one damage to it. Three mana, two four is pretty cool, but at three mana, maybe it's not good enough. And uh, how many cards are you trying to enrage right now? You know, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be good. Uh, War Master Voon. Copy all dragons in your hand, four mana. Wow, another card that I think is insane for Dragon Warrior. Smolder Thorn Lancer. If you're holding a dragon, destroy a damage enemy minion. Execute attached to a body that has dragons. This card, like, single-handedly, I feel like, finishes this archetype into what you want. I'm so sad it's an epic because I'm going to have to fucking craft it if Dragon Warrior is good. So I'm going to talk about Dragon Warrior again after this, um, after all this, so please stick by and then I'll talk about what I think about Warrior because I've played Warrior for a long time and I really love Warrior and I really love Dragon Warrior back when it was a thing. But my initial reaction is, wow. Um, if I had, like, if Warrior had these tools like a year ago, I actually think Warrior would have been crazy. But we need to have a longer discussion for how Warrior will do right now. Okay, so Heavy Metal. Summon a random minion with cost up equal uh, to your armor. I think this card is shitty. Um, yes, you could go Ember Scale Drake into Heavy Metal. That requires so much fucking setup because you have to have Summon Ember Drake at the turn, literally the turn before, not been damaged. And it's summoning a 5 cost if you have armor beforehand. So I think Heavy Metal sucks. It's not an odd warrior. It's not going to be played. And it can't be played an odd warrior because it's an even cost card. Which, I mean, they thought about. I just don't think it's good. Okay, Soul Thrays. Overkill, you may attack again. Huh, we already had Fool's Bane, which is 5 mana 3, 4. It, Fool's Bane can't go face, but it was 5 mana 3, 4. I honestly think Fool's Bane was a better card than this, so I don't think it'll be played. Okay, so let me... Let me talk about Dragon Warrior for a second. Without having looked at the neutrals, I do. I want to say something about Dragon Warrior. I think that Dragon Warrior, if it can generate enough tempo between Devastate and Smotherhold Lancer, will actually be pretty decent. Here's the reason I say it would be crazy two expansions ago, right? Because it would have not only some great tempo, it would also have good late game comparable. It wouldn't lose to inevitable matchups like Rexar and such. So I actually think Dragon Warrior would have been fucking crazy last expansion. Um, Blizzard obviously knows, knows what they're doing, so they didn't print uh, Dragon's Roar or Warmaster Voon as odd cards, because if you print them as odd cards, well, they're going to be played in Odd Warrior with this and this. Um, you know, so smart on them to not do so. Same thing with Heavy Metal. Smart on them to not make it a five-cost card, otherwise it's broken in Odd Warrior. But I worry that it still won't be good enough against things like Egg Hunter, right? Because Egg Hunter... You sacrifice one turn of tempo to drop the egg, but it b blows up mid-range matchups. It blows up control matchups. Can Dragon Warrior do the same thing? I don't think so, because you can play something at turn three, right? And they can drop their egg, and now you have tempo. But they're going to proc that egg and summon many 5-5s five off of it and get a shit ton of value. Can Dragon Warrior do that? I don't think so. You draw cards in your hand. Yeah, you add two random dragons, and that means you can activate these very easily. Great. Does it put them on the field and help stop you from dying? No, it doesn't. And Warrior is already so vulnerable to the type of tempo Hunter can generate off of having one turn of investment from the egg. And it's always felt like this way with Warrior, right? Where Hunter can get off to a very powerful start. So I worry that even though these cards are insane uh, in some ways, in other ways they might actually not be enough for this era of Hearthstone to compete with Hunter. And I mostly think competing with Hunter is the scary part. If this was printed in an era where you need to compete with a value priest, it's poss almost possible. If this was printed in an era where you were competing with Paladin, it's possible. Warlock, it's possible to win these matchups because you can out-tempo them. You can continue fueling. In this era against Hunter, it actually seems very difficult to do so. Okay, finally, we move on to the neutrals. So, Spellzerker has plus two spell damage while damaged. Um, in Rage works best with Warrior. If it's not with Warrior, how are you going to do this? You proc it with your mage hero power. Other than that, it's kind of hard to proc. I don't think this card will be that great. 
because spell power is more useful for OTKs or if they just come naturally like the newer mage cards. Shieldbreaker, silence an enemy when you're in a taunt. This is actually a pretty sleeper. I don't think it's OP, but it's sleeper in the sense that this will be very useful in uh, dealing with taunts and it helps Smork decks, which I actually do think need a lot of help right now. And uh, I like that they printed this card. Servant Ward at the end of your turn, deal two damage to enemy hero. This is only gonna be played if there's a combo. I don't think this is played in normal decks. Scarab Egg, Death Rattle, Summon 3 Wormland Scarabs. This is very sleeper. Unfortunately, the issue you're going to run into is that you, um, the 1-1 one, one Scarabs are worse than a 4-4, four, four, right? Which an Arubian Egg was because it's, like, it's just so easy to have AoE and it's so easy to trade against. But if you can buff them, it's good. So this card might be sleeper. I'm not sure. Uh, Rumble Tusk sh Shaker. Summon a 3-2 Rumble Tusk Breaker. Um... Yeah, so if you want to compare this to um, that 4-3, uh, the, the uh, piloted shredder. It's the worst piloted shredder. That's more consistent. If you want to look at it as a 4-mana 6-4, I don't even think a 4-mana 6-4 would be played. It's spread across two minions instead, but it's a death rattle. I don't think this card will be played. Uh, regenerating Thug. At the start of your turn, restore two health to this minion. Uh, actually pretty good in Arena. Um, in Standard, though, I don't think it's great. Ice Dream Peddler. If you control a frozen minion, gain 8 armor. I don't think that's getting played. Uh, reduce the cost of a beast in your hand by 1. Helpless Hatchling. Uh, I don't think that's going to be played. Gurbashi Offering. At the start of your turn, destroy this gain 8 armor. So this is 1 mana gain 8 armor, or they have to deal 2 damage to it. I don't know what deck this fits in. I actually have no idea how to now analyze it. Former Champ. Battle Cry Summon a 5 5 Hotshot. Uh, this card came as a 6 mana 1 1 that summoned a 6 6. It was not played. This is not going to see play. Drakari Trickster. Give it each player a copy of a random minion from their opponent's deck. Uh, that's not getting played. Dozing Marksman has plus four damage, plus four attack roll damage, so you have to do one damage to it somehow. Turns into a 4-3. Two mana 4-3, is it good enough? Yes, but two mana 4-3 if you have to set it up first, no. So I don't think it's going to be played. Booty Babe Rookie, give your opponent a coin, two mana 3-3. Three, three. Man, if that card was a pirate, I think it would be played, but because it's not a pirate, I actually have doubts that a two mana 3-3, three, three, like... If you give your opponent coin, that's that's a lot they can do with it. Banana Buffoon. Add two bananas to your hand. This is going to maybe see playing Quest Mage. Other than that, I don't see it being played. Arena Treasure Chest. Death Rattle. Draw two cards. It's actually very interesting because that's like the two mana, or the one mana, two, a zero, two runic egg that draws you a card. Unfortunately, at four mana, it's probably too expensive. I think if it was a three mana card and a zero, three, it might be played. Other than that, it's too expensive. Arena Patron. Summon another Arena Patron. Wow, the fact that it's a three, three, and you have to attack... That's really shit. It's not getting played. Um, Arena Fanatic. Give all minions in your hand plus one, plus one. So even at, if this was a three mana card, this would be bad. I don't know. If it was a three mana card, maybe it's not awful. But a four mana card, it's so bad. It's so slow for investment. Because at four mana, you're playing two, three. And then it's only a plus one, plus one buff. It's not getting played. Dragon Ball Scorcher. Deal one damage to all other minions. So I saw some people saying like this card. And this was more off the subreddit during the initial reaction. Some people said this card is going to be like... Oh, this card's ridiculous. It's uh, Dragon Warrior is going to be crazy. You're going to drop this and it's going to kill everything. Yeah, here's the thing, right? Now, last time we had this Ravaging Ghoul at 3 mana, 3 mana, 3, 3, deal 1 to everything. It enraged your stuff. It could kill enemy minions. It dropped at 3 mana. It was a good tempo drop. And then Priest got the 4 mana Duskbreaker, which is even more broken. At 5 mana, dealing 1 to everything isn't that great, especially for a 3, 6. If this was like a 4, 6 or a 5, 6, I think this card would be good. As a 3, 6, however, wow, do I think it's not that... Um, you know exciting it's just maybe warrior gets desperate and uses it as a dragon other than that though it's not actually that exciting to me uh moog enforcer taunt divine shield uh what can i say it can be stolen from priest it can be killed by priest it can be abused by priest probably won't see play maybe someone finds a way to abuse it halftime scavenger stealth overkill gain three armor good arena card uh probably won't see play in normals cheaty ankle biker life steal battle cry deal one damage uh two mana two one deal one heal one Probably won't see play. Potentially heal three, but probably won't see play. <laughs> uh, Honorary Tortoise, battle cry, deal five damage to your hero. I actually think that could potentially see play in Hunter, because Hunter, if it's just caring about smorking and summoning beasts, it might see play. This is like one of those sleeper cards that like the difference of one stat might matter. And I think at the three mana slot, it actually kind of does, because I can't think of many three or four cost cards that strictly deal five damage. I think of stuff that deals 4 damage, but 5 damage comes at a bit more of an expense for those cards, so you're at least baiting more stuff out of your opponent. Uh, Mujo Master Zihi said each player's mana crystal 5, or see each player to 5 mana crystals. I think 100% some aggro decks will try it out. Um, it might be a bit inconsistent, but 
if they can draw it, it might act as a pseudo Lotheb um, and cuck out like control decks. Uh, so I think it actually will see play. Uh, a snapjaw shell fighter, whenever an adjacent minion takes damage, this, I think that card's shit because if an adjacent minion takes damage, you're paying five mana for three eight, first of all, and it protects adjacent minions, but wow, that's a lot of setup. You summon a really big minion you want to protect, hope it doesn't die, then you summon a five mana three eight to protect it. Why not just summon a stronger minion that has more priority? Moog announcer. Enemies attacking this have 50% chance to attack something else. Um, see, this can't make enemies attack their own minions, so I actually don't think it's very good. Uh, other than that, though, probably will be played in Arena. The Undertaker. Game the Death Rattle effects of three friendly minions that died this game. Uh, yes, uh, I think this card will be played in a Death Rattle Hunter deck um, or just a general Death Rattle deck. I don't think Death Rattle is good enough to become the. This card is good enough, like Nazoth, to become like the ultimate win condition. But it's a it's one win condition. It's one way to gain like, you know, things. So I think it will be played. Uh, Line Cracker. Uh, overkill, double this minion's attack. Um, good in Arena, unlikely that it procs very much in normal games, but it's a very good idea. It's a cool idea because it's 10 health, right? So it's actually kind of hard to kill, um, and so it might see play. Uh, but I, I kind of doubt it, right? Because 7 mana 5 10 on its own isn't good enough, and even doubling its attack to a 10 10, um, by then your opponent either has lost because they don't, they can't really deal with it anyways, or they've they're playing a good deck that can deal with it. Sightless Ranger, Rush, Overkill, Summon 2, 1-1 one, one Bats. Okay, so for 5 mana, you need to deal 3 damage, and then you summon 1-1 one, one Bats. Uh, question, there's a Hunter spell that says 5 mana, deal 3 damage, summon a 5-5. Five, five. Isn't that not better? And I already said that card sucks, so I don't think this will be played. All right, Crowd Roaster, if you're holding a dragon, deal 7 damage to an enemy minion. Uh, yeah, I think this will see play in Dragon Warrior or other dragon decks. Is it as crazy as some people think? No, I don't. Uh, because at 7 damage, you're only going to kill things smaller than it. You're not killing Lich Kings or Malagoses or other stuff. But it's a really good tempo drop. All right. Grifta. Discover two cards. Give one to your opponent at random. Um, this card seems like a meme. I don't think that card's getting played. Murloc Hasty Finn. Draw two Murlocs from your deck. More Murloc synergy, but if you're going to play Murlocs... I think Murloc Mage is the way to go, and Murloc Mage already has good draw, so probably won't see play. Serenite Taskmaster, summon a 0-3 free agent with taunt for your opponent. Um, so some people were saying this is a sleeper card because it's a 1-mana two, 2-3. Two, um, I actually don't know how important early drops are right now because aggro hasn't existed for a while, so I, f I haven't felt very pressured to like put early drops in my decks to contest aggro. It's just if that does happen, I see this card as being playable. Mass Contender, Battlecry, if you control a secret, play a secret from your deck. Uh, yeah, I think that requires quite a bit of setup, because um, you're not getting any reduction cost from the secret. Maybe in the Subject 9 Hunter it gets played, but Subject 9 Hunter, I think the 3 drop slot is so competitive already. For Mage, 3 drops are as competitive. For Paladin, you're not playing Secret Paladin, so unless Secret Paladin's played, I don't think Mass Contender is going in any other decks. Soup Vendor, whenever you restore 3 or more health to your hero, draw a card. Uh, I actually think Soup Vendor is kind of sleeper. Um, potentially Heladin could use it to tempo stuff out, although you're investing a lot for the heal and draw cards. Like, whenever you're paying for a card that says, if you do X, draw a card, it has to be easy to proc, like Auctioneer, otherwise it's too high of an investment. Okay. Uh, Rabble Bouncer. Uh, cost one less for each enemy minion. For this to be good, it needs to be played at, like, what, four or five mana, maybe? Because if you drop the stats to seven, six, five... Five, so it's like a four or five, so it needs to be four or five mana. So you need two or three enemy minions for it to be good has potential, but aggro isn't too meta right now, and Spreading Plague is a better card. <laughs> uh, Ammonai Warbear, Rush Taunt, um, 7 mana, deal 5, and have 7 health taunt. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Alright, Fire Tree Witch Doctor, if you're holding a Dragon Discover spell, uh, actually might see play in Warrior, because Warrior no longer has the 2 mana 1-3 Discover a Dragon if you're holding a Dragon, so could be potential. Uh, Hacker on the Soul Flare. Now, if I remember correctly, the way Corrupted Blood works is that it deals one damage and then, or deals three damage, then shuffles two copies in your deck. Uh, isn't that just worse than Fatigue, though? Because, or not better, worse, better than Fatigue, because with Fatigue, you take exponential damage. With this, it casts it, but it doesn't draw a card, right? So you die eventually, but you don't die as quickly as Fatigue, so I don't see this as, like, really killing them as fast as Fatigue does, un unless I'm mistaken in the mechanic. Other than that, I can't imagine it being too good. It does kill combo, though, so perhaps a warrior um, will play it against some shit like Shaman or Sh Shutterwalk or something. Uh, but Shutterwalk's not an issue anyways. Uh, I do love the flavor, though. Um, Untamed Beastmaster. Whenever you draw a beast, give it plus two, plus two. Uh, actually, a card might be played because it's a three mana, three, three. 
So it's not exactly easy to get rid of. And if you're drawing beasts as hunter, or as a druid, it'll, it might matter. Druid matters less because they're, I said before, their beast deck will be a big beast deck, but hunter actually has small beasts, so actually might be played. Water boy, your next hero power to this turn costs zero. Okay, great, so your hero power discards you a card and summons a 2-1, I don't think it's good. Gurubashi chicken, overkill gain plus five attack. Wow, DK Rexar gets another minion for its health pool. Other than that, no. Odansta, overkill, summon a beast from your hand. I think Undasta will be played in Hunter. I don't think that's a very bold prediction. <laughs> like, Death Rattle Hunter is going to play this, or like some sort of beast rush recruit hunter is going to play it. Belligerent Gnome. Taunt. If your opponent has two or more minions, gain plus one attack. Um, again, if aggro comes back, sure. If it doesn't, then it's not played. Ticket Scalper. Overkill. Draw three. Two cards. Um, actually, very likely to proc if you have tempo advantage. So... This could be a card that really solidifies pirates for Rogue. But Rogue has other good ways to draw cards, so I don't think it's necessary 100%. Sharkfin Fan. After your hero attacks, summon a 1-1 pirate. Uh, I don't think that's amazing, because your hero has to attack. All right, so overall, um, I don't see much that's too broken in this expansion, but there is some really cool stuff that I hope works out, like Dragon Warrior. Uh, I love some of the flavor, like the Undasta, like the uh, Soul Flare. Very cool flavor, um, the Undateka. There's a lot of like stuff that could be sleeper, I feel like, in this uh, set. And other than that, there's not much you can say. I think Warrior is a big winner in terms of them getting new tools to play with. Uh, ha, um, Druid also got some tools to play with for decks, but War Druid Lottie especially is pretty good. Warrior has some decent cards. Uh, Hunter, I don't think, has much outside of Zul'jin. Um, Master's Call maybe for a Beast Hunter. I think the other cards require a lot of setup. Mage, um, uh, Elementals might actually be good because this innervates out Elementals really hard. And Odd Mage, holy cow, because of the uh, Ragnaros thing. Um, Paladin, uh, I don't think any of these cards were amazing. Heladin doesn't seem amazing to me. Casting Paladin spells for this seems difficult. There could be a broken combo with it, like with the Holy Fire, or the Holy whatever thing that draws it and then kills someone. Um, Priest... Uh, yeah, I said Priest doesn't really excite me too much either. Um, Rogue does not excite me too much either. Shaman does not excite me. Warlock has some new interesting things, uh, but overall, this card is probably the most exciting part of Warlock. Anyways, that's my reaction to all the new cards that were dropped today on November 28th, 2018. Uh, so yeah, hopefully you guys will check out my uh, Rakashitan Rumble videos when they inevitably come out and... I believe they should uh, the set should drop around December 4th so anyways uh, yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my thoughts I know it's not super analytical but I just felt like talking about these cards and taking a look at them because I hadn't had a chance yet uh, but yeah this has been Jack Mizrax 4 signing out